AI, don't worry, be healthy. Oh, must be creative, must be Paul's. <laughs> yeah, um, I was doing some research. I'm going to do an article on this, but uh, research on what AI has done for the, the, the health and medical areas. And I mean, it's amazing. I think in you know, probably five years, we'll be able to subscribe to, uh, to an AI uh, doctor if you want, and you'll probably have the capability to write prescriptions for us also. Uh, but uh, AI is having really a profound impact on the uh, health and uh, medical areas. And I said, it's probably going to continue for the next five years. Uh, right now, I mean, AI can help diagnose uh, diseases. It can uh, predict outcomes. Uh, can recommend treatments and uh, analyze records and, uh, and all kinds of things. But uh, it can also uh, improve uh, patient experience. I, I wrote that one article about AWS uh, Health Card uh, that's uh, getting uh, kind of wide, widespread use. And uh, so there's a lot of things it can do, virtual assistants, telemedicine, all kinds of things. Uh, and like I said, it, um, with Health Card, it enhanced the productivity and efficiency of the health healthcare provider. So uh, it can also uh, enable discoveries on biomedical research and drug development. And I wrote an article, I think, last year, or maybe uh, a little longer than that, uh, what IBM was doing to uh, come up with uh, uh, using a generative AI and foundation models to come up with uh, uh, new medicines for uh, superbugs, and uh, so I mean it, it's incredible. Some of the some of the challenges that we're going to be facing when when we look into the future is there going to be a lot of ethical and and legal and social issues to work out with with medical treatment by an AI. Uh, privacy, of course, is one of them. Uh, uh, bias, you know, all the things that come up. Um, it, uh, it's going to take scaling up and, and uh, quite a bit of scaling up for this to impact the healthcare industry. There's going to be a lot of barriers to overcome. You know, right now we've got data quality issues and hallucinations and all kinds of things. So, um, and uh, I had to ask Paul, why yeah. has it taken this long to to get here? Uh, Watson was supposed to do this a decade ago, I think. Yeah. Well, simple answer is we didn't have generative AI. Uh, that has, you know, totally changed everything, and it's done it really fast. Uh, uh, we've never had anything have such a major impact in such a short of time, technology-wise, until generative AI came out. So, yeah, I totally I mean, agree. Totally agree. And the other thing is, uh, Watson was based on analytics, did not use hardware acceleration. Uh, as well, it was the best idea, uh, just just too too early, yeah. out there, not to be confused with the much improved first time to market uh, Watson X here. And yeah. you know, it Paul, I'm glad you brought this up because just the, the way that I look at this is is you know it's really the what will be impacted by generative AI, right? Yeah. And and. I look at this broadly as the stuff that wasn't impacted by dot com in the 90s and web 2.0 in the 2000s. So dot com era transformed businesses that, you know, like travel agents, stockbrokers, uh, brick and mortar uh, electronic stores. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then web 2.0 was about uh, changing in content. Right. It was streaming music, movies. Uh, and uh, and news, so it it reshaped all of those industries, right? And so so what's going to be Gen AI, right? It's going to be legal. It's going to be healthcare mm -hmm. accounts payable, accounts receivable, uh, uh, call centers, uh, those sea of cubes, right? And, and not that generative AI isn't going to impact all the all, you know, but but this is where you're going to see the big differences and and that this first in where I think 2024 is, it's going to be a productivity play. It's either getting more work done by the same workers or getting the same work done by less workers. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's what I'm seeing. And it's what companies are willing to pay for. And then I think on the healthcare side, I mean, 
literally the data that's available uh, and a doctor, can, can, a, a real doctor, there's no way they can have the capability to uh, be recent with every journal, uh, every JAMA article, uh, every process or every procedure that's been done at that hospital should it at a minimum be run by a generative AI uh, uh, doctor uh, chatbot. If nothing else, for the doctor to go in and, and see if it's anything different from what uh, from what they might think. And the ability to fine tune this data and how good the data is based on a decade of outcomes inside of a procedure inside of a hotel, sorry, inside of a hospital, uh, just seems like, you know, I, I hope this is not one of these, oh, it's such a no brainer, but uh, the liability is, is, is too high. And then you can imagine mm -hmm. applying this to places that don't have good health care mm -hmm. or health care. Uh, people can't afford it. Right. I mean, when Third something goes, yeah. yeah, like what's the first thing that happens when maybe we're not feeling good. We, we do a Google search and we get, we get sent to WebMD or we get sent to the Cleveland clinic. Right. And, and, you know, they're probably, if they're smart, which I question, uh, is are they going to be the first movers on that, or is a startup going to come along that's going to be, right? WebMD was a startup during the dot com era, right? right? Yeah. And, and look, look what it did, right? Yeah. So, 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 yeah, that's just kind of my ruminations well, on this topic. Yeah, we're we're, we're on the path. Uh, uh, Google's uh, Med Palm model was the first model to to get a passing score on the U.S. Medical licensing exam. They've got Med Palm two now, and it, it approved it by like twenty percent, and it had an expert level accuracy of uh, like eighty six percent, I believe. Uh, and plus these models, I mean, the, the MD can have a conversation with with the uh, with the model, asking questions about complex medical conditions and that type of thing. So it's crazy. Yeah, uh, like five years is going to be a no brainer. Yeah. Uh, All right, give folks. The homeless, give the homeless people a uh, an iPhone with a uh, a doctor built into it and say go cure you. Just mm -hmm. something, something for people who don't have that. Um, disadvantaged communities, um, places. You know, sometimes we don't talk about this. Even places like China, fifty percent of Chinese are uh, can't read or write. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's on it's on the the western portion, not the industrialized portion. India is the same way, yeah. And and just imagining uh, what this could uh, could do for folks. 